myself, I'ma lift my soul, yeah. I've been through some heartache, but it's bigger than me. How could I ever just quit? It's conviction of me. I heard the Lord say, if you go, then I can't promise you weeks. But I'll open up some doors that the people ain't see. Somebody pray in the back as I put it on the line. Who am I to settle? Oh, I know it only one divine. It's the truth. It's about time. You can't change how it's... I'm gonna prune these tomatoes. And I am freaking cold. Oh boy. Am I really gonna do it? I don't know. We have a lot to fight. Oh my gosh, this took a big fight. Peace, Lord Jesus. Please, Lord. Please, Lord God, bring your peace. Thank you. 
Oh, she says me alone. After a while, oh, you, can't be oh, you, you begin to learn. I'm doing this so that I don't forget the weirdness of the situation. You know, once you go do something that the devil hates, um, you know, get filled with love and goodness and, you know, just got, came back from church, uh, whatever's in you, it gets a little bit crazy. <laughs> it's really weird. So I'm going a little bit crazy. Anyways, I just want to remember that when it gets crazy like that, it's a good thing. You just have to keep fighting because it's trying to fight back. And it knows it's already been exposed, so it's just being pain in the butt, but it's going to get cast out, so we can't stay. No. No religious spirit's gonna stay here, no Jezebel spirit's gonna stay here, no Kundalini spirit's gonna stay here, no spouse demon spirit's gonna stay here, no witchcraft's gonna stay here, no witch's spells are gonna be able to work on me anymore because there is no more ground for them because I am fully submitted to God now and so nothing can stay. It's all gotta go. The only reason why it's still here is that there's more stuff that God wants to reveal to me. That's it. That's totally it. So even though it feels like something is touching me right now, I'm not going to respond to it. This is so weird. Hi. Say hi to me, Jack. You're doing all, you're doing okay? Yes, and uh You're feeling better? Yeah, I am. You are? Yeah. Gonna sleep good tonight? Just, be, just being in the uh, presence of uh, both of you, <laughs> <laughs> of your granddaughter. Yeah. You like her visit? Yeah. And, and I'm good. I'll still like her. <laughs> he still likes you. <laughs> I'm glad you still like me. I still like you too. <laughs> <laughs> what? Do you like my socks, Joy? Maybe. Bye. They're your socks?
but at least I'm outside and I'm about to work on this. Frisbee is it? Well, every Sunday, we we'll plan to be out here. Coming for Ain't too busy trying to make it look good for the cameras. Then going advertising like they really got more. I know some of them thinking that what I'm doing is a problem. But we standing with each other because together we solve it. I don't hunger with everybody from some killers and robbers to them ghetto country boys. We're dipping their eyes. They said so low. Now I'm standing all alone. Call me Dolo. Got my black shirt. <laughs> Block, go, blocks going in. <laughs> wow. The last side. Looking pretty, Nate. Jacqueline. Wow, that's a lot of concrete y'all put in. I would, but I gotta run. <laughs> wow. Or did they? No, I didn't. I didn't get a fish. <laughs> Never mind. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Put my Last stone. Da -da -da. Boom. Dun -dun. Congratulations. Hey, congrats. Yay! <laughs> Guilt it. Guilt it. dream I was looking at myself as a young girl as a little kid and I was sitting underneath the tree and I was looking through a window in a house and I was looking at myself outside under the tree and I was like I wonder what happened to that girl and then it hit me I'm like oh wait that's me I walked in the house and I ran into this lady and she looks at me she has this big big smile on her face and she's like she's like I see signs she's like I see wonders I see miracles I see us She's like saying these things to me. I'm like, oh, that's pretty sweet. And I wake up, it's like, my heart is just like on fire. And um, all I wanna do is worship during lunch break at the garden. And I decide to go out on the field and with my worship flags and just worship. And I'm out there and I'm like, I'm just gonna keep pressing in. I'm just gonna keep pressing in. I'm just gonna keep praying. I don't wanna stop. So I was out there for like two hours. And as I really wanted to touch the Lord. And I was like, 
I know you want to do it. <laughs> you know, I was like, I'm like, I know you want to. Um, anyways, well, it definitely happened. I came back into the car. I was so drunk and I have never been drunk on anything else, but I knew this was drunk. I was very much drunk. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't able to stand up straight. I was, I was, I kept falling over. My dad's like, oh, Go work on the cucumbers. I'm like, oh yeah, no little cucumbers. And then I'm like trying to cut the cucumbers and I'm just falling over and I had to go lean up against the fence. I could barely stand up. Oh, so heavy, like so heavy. And then um, the guys are thinking I'm probably taking something else, but I'm like, no, it's the Holy Spirit. And then I felt in my heart like I needed to share this. And I learned something. I learned that God really does operate in waves. And when I was praying out there, he opened like this door of grace. And you think of the pool of Bethesda when um, the water was stirred and when an angel came, that whoever got in the water first was healed. So there are these opportunities and God is moving in something very specific and you don't want to miss it. So I felt like I really like, wow, I'm being shaky. I need to adjust this. Um, but like, I, I really felt like I needed to lay hands on everybody that I saw. So I was just like laying hands on people. And I was like, one of the guys, I'm like, I've never done this before, but you want some. <laughs> really weird, but, um, and then all of a sudden my dad comes back and then I'm like sighing over him. Have I not told you I love you? And then like sending fire and it began to rain like really rain it just like poured and I just like laid in the gravel and just like sucked it all in then I'm running around and screaming Jesus come and get ready and then I can't help myself but run over all of campus and make sure I go through every single building um screaming and then I run into one building and the staff are sitting down for a meeting it's sopping wet I just open up the door and I'm like Jesus is coming Jesus is coming and I'm bopping them all on the head it was a crazy day and then I was like wow I, I don't really know what I signed myself up for but I think I really like it Yeah. 
Probably enjoy your place, but it can't do anything out there. It can't, no, that's that's where he gets all the bugs and stuff. That's what he eats. She put a if you had a block to fit on that last one, you could keep him. The turtle eat the bug, eat some bugs. water and cigarettes.
anybody who had a blue on the roof? It's about one in the morning, and I'm making this video because um, it's been a long time, a year and a half now. sprinklers and hose, irrigation, random, wire, PVC, zip ties, T-post, wraparound, insulator, metal piping, nails and screws, um, irrigation sprinklers, staples, paint, rope, PVC, straps, chains, and bands, piping, electrical, tape, glue, and pipe thread, greenhouse clips, and I'll put that away. <laughs> You're gonna capture fire, but I captured it. And I capture y'all's faces too. Capture fire. Just like, you know, actually capture it. I think if you want it bad enough. Brandon. Just put it in the jar. You just might not be able to hold it. It's just it's like you'll Oh you pick it up. I was going to, but he just Bye bye green snake. It looks like a leaf. I've seen a snake like that. Are you okay? What a life stick bug. Dear life. Moving stick bug. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so I've had blue with the I've had crabs like out of life, but I don't remember it. 
Say hi. <laughs> Wait, I have, I have not catch up either. I'm behind because so of you. So that's what I'm doing right now. Because I don't want, I'm behind because of you. I know I need you, man. I need you, man. Because I, I know that. Why do you have to be like that? Why? Okay, Sorry. Like it's that. okay. I'm not doing weird uh, effects. Is it okay that I video you? <laughs> He's having a blast. That is so cool. Heck yeah. Why haven't I done that yet? <laughs> yeah. Paparazzi. <laughs> I want some yogurt. Oh, <laughs> it's eating yogurt. What happened to this? It's, it's like a humongous reaction. It really, really hurts. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> Look at those eyes, though. That's creepy. Smile. <laughs> myself on the head with um when I was trying to get my packages into the van and it was so full I couldn't even walk and there's still so much and it's already getting dark so that's great Your money's gone. I can't 
late at night and my mind is racing so frantically And I want to see your face so badly And I just had to let go of your hand this afternoon And now I'm praying that I get to see you soon Okay, back home <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Lord, I have my brother Chris upon your public profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise to walk in this. Oh, that's awful. Yeah. That's like my age. Yeah, too. Oh, could you put your music in the phone thing? I don't know. I have this habit of zooming up on people's faces. <laughs> I can't see you anyway. It's good black. <laughs> Flash. It's New Year's. New Year's. Maybe I'll catch a firework. Nah. Just an, air, just an airplane. Hey. It's a little doggy. Alright, if you need to eat this, you get hungry, this is all I've got. Oh, you got the whipped cream. Put your eyeballs together. <laughs> Don't do that to me, Justin. I don't know what the eyeballs do. That's actually horrifying. So, <laughs> it makes it look like I have the biggest nose to exist. <laughs> Time to get some Soto Ayam. Let's play in a second, because look. <laughs> like all the fish that ever had, I think those are like real fish. Um, so yeah. The guy I liked, the job I liked, the opportunities I thought I had, my car, my money, my family is confused with me, I'm confused with me, but Jesus is still here. I'm down in the trenches, I'm down in the trenches, Ooh. You wanna get down in the trenches with me? Never ever change, you're the great I am. Shit. Alright, when does the 
afraid that we're gonna slide sideways and hit all of that and you guys. And yeah. I don't want, please. Oh no. He doesn't care at all. I do care. I didn't know I, I didn't know I lost it. Come on, Lennon. Okay, it is January, um, what day is today? It's a Tuesday, and I believe it is the day before the last day of January. January 30th, and it is 2.55, it's almost 3 o'clock, I'm looking outside, it was not supposed to rain today, it actually was just sunny today, and then all of a sudden I'm looking outside and there's these rain clouds and I'm hearing a little bit of thunder, I'm seeing rain come and I'm looking at the thing and it says exactly at three o'clock there's going to be rain. And that is the ninth hour. Something is happening. I I don't know. I'm just sensing something is about happening right now and I'm trying to eat my food and I feel like I'm not supposed to be eating food right now but I want to eat it. Anyways. Something's happening. I think a miracle is happening right now. Something is happening. your treat <sighs> you get smacked in the face what do you do you smack them right back yes you do yes you do look at that eye <laughs> that's just totally normal definitely normal Have you been down here before? Okay, so I just started my um, lunch break exactly when the rain decided to downpour, which is very helpful. Um, good timing, I guess. I love the rain, um, but it makes me just a little bit sad. Whew. Not gonna be sad. Not gonna be sad. It's gonna be good. Good day. Lots of businesses today. And um, I think I've made good progress. So just a little bit more. And uh, my phone's gonna die. And the charger and the doesn't work. So stress, but I'm not going to let it bother me actually starting a business and I'm not just talking about it because look it's actually happening this is probably one of the highest quality body oils you can possibly get um, and they also have different uses um, <clears throat> I mean they're all body oils so you typically put it on right after you take a shower and it's just like a good thing to nourish your skin i'm also doing anointing oil and this is holy anointing oil and it's an actual recipe from the bible <laughs> much higher now <laughs> oh that was impressive So I'm trying to memorize Psalms 119 and I made some progress, so uh, I'm going to try to quote as much as I can. Here I go. Oh, KJ wants to come outside. You're welcome. Okay. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect for all your commandments. When I have respect for all of your commandments. I will praise you with a righteousness of heart when I have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. How does a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed to it according to your word. With my whole heart have I sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. 
Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in your precepts and have respect for your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not your commandments from me. Here goes my nose. Hide not your commandments from me. My soul breaks for the longing it has for your judgments at all times. You rebuke the proud that are cursed, which are error from your commandments. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept your testimonies. Princes also did sit and speak against me, but your servant did meditate in your statutes. Your testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. My soul my soul cleaves to the dust. Revive me according to your word. I have declared my ways and you heard me. Teach me your statutes. Give me understanding. Make me to understand the way of your precepts. So shall I talk of your wondrous works. My soul melts for heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Remove from me the way of lying and grant me your law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Your judgments have I laid before me. I have stuck to your testimonies. O oh Lord, put me not to shame. I will run the way of your commandments when you enlarge my heart. Teach me, O oh Lord, your, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding. Give me understanding, and I will keep your law. Yea, I will observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the path of your commandments. Which I have loved. For in them do I delight. Make me to go in the path of your commandments. For in them do I delight. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity. And revive me in your way. Establish your word to your servant who is devoted to your fear. Remove, turn away from me the reproach which I fear, for your judgments are good. Behold, I've longed after your precepts. Revive me in your righteousness. My bones can die. Let your mercies come also unto me, O oh Lord, according to your word. Oh, actually, my re rewind. Let your mercies come to me, O oh Lord, even your salvation, according to your word. And now I know more than that, but I'm just going to go ahead and start reading it because it's going to take too long. Because this is good stuff. And everybody needs to know Psalms 119. But I'm just going to read, not the whole chapter, just how much that I've been working on. Because that's what I've written down here. But this is really good. It's really good. So let me go. Let your mercies come also unto me, O Lord, even your salvation, according to your word. So shall I have an answer for him who reproaches me. For I trust in your word, and take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth. For I have hoped in your judgments. So shall I keep your law continually forever and ever, and I will walk at liberty, for I seek your precepts. I will speak of your testimonies also before kings, and will not be ashamed. I will delight myself in your commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in your statutes. Remember the word given unto your servant, upon which you have caused me to hope. This is my comfort and my affliction, for your word has revived me. The proud had me greatly a derision, yet have I not declined from your law. I remembered your judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. Horror has taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake your law. Your statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. I remembered your name, O Lord, in the night, and have kept your law. This I have because I kept your precepts. 
You are my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep your words. I have treated your favor with my whole heart. Be merciful to me according to your word. I thought on my ways and turned my feet to your testimonies. I made haste and delayed not to keep your and delayed not <laughs> to keep your commandments. The bands of the wicked have robbed me, but I have not forgotten your law. At midnight I will rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous judgments. I'm the companion to all of them that fear you and of them that keep your precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of your mercy. Teach me your statutes. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your law. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I have kept your word. You are good and you do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. They that fear you will be glad when they see me, because I have hope in your word. I know, O oh Lord, that your judgments are right, and that you in faithfulness have afflicted me. Let, I pray, your merciful kindness be for my comfort, according to your word to your servant. Let your tender mercies come to me, that I may live, for your law is my delight. Let the proud be ashamed, for they dealt perversely with me without a cause. But I will meditate in your precepts. Let those that fear you turn to me, and those that have known your testimonies, let my heart be sound in your statutes, that I be not ashamed. My soul faints for your salvation, but I hope in your word. My eyes fail for your word, saying, When will you comfort me, for I have become like a bottle of smoke? Yet do I not forget your statutes. When will you execute judgment on them that persecute me? The proud have dug pits for me, which are not which are not after your law. All your commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongly. Help me. They had almost consumed me on earth, but I forsook not your commandments. I forsook not your precepts. Revive me after your loving kindness. So shall I keep the testimony of your mouth. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness is unto all generations. You have established the earth and it abides. They continue to say according to your ordinances for all of your servants. Unless your law had been my delight, I should have been perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for with them you have revived me. I am yours. Save me, for I have sought your precepts. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me, but I will consider your testimonies. I have seen an end to all perfection, but your commandment is exceedingly broad. Oh, how I love your commandments. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. You, through your commandments, have made me wiser than my enemies. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep your word. I have not departed from your judgments, for you have taught me. How sweet are your words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and I will perform it, that I will keep your righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, I beseech you, the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. My soul is continually in my hands. Yet do I not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I err not from your precepts. Your testimonies have I taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes always, even to the end. I hate vain thoughts, but your law do I love. And there's so much more that I have not written down yet, but that I know, you don't believe me, but I've actually memorized most of that. I'm just too slow right now to actually video this, but I wanted to be able to at least read all that because it's so good. And when you're memorizing it, you realize just how rich it is and how much the law of the Lord is loved and appreciated. It's just amazing. And most people don't re realize that. I mean, like I, there's a lot of Christians who like they, there is no love for the law of the Lord. And that's a problem, a big problem. So yeah, you gotta love the things of the Lord. You gotta love righteousness. Um, that's who Jesus is. If you love Jesus, you're gonna love the things that are of Him. And you're gonna hate the things that are not of Him. As a believer, you know, circumstances don't necessarily get easier, but life does get so much better. Like, so much better. And um, the hard times just become good times. Not all the time, but like, 
there's there's it's, it's nothing's meaningless basically and that's what's beautiful about it and just going over everything that i put together i just realized like wow god's really moving and he's doing things even in the midst of what just seems like chaos so i'm very incredibly thankful and i can't really stop saying that <laughs> i'm just very thankful because i know god has more plans and he has more things that he wants to do and um I could snuff that out or I could just keep saying yes and I feel like I'm just gonna keep saying yes also one more thing um, I actually wrote out my testimony and I have it written out more in depth um, and I put that on a little blog and um, I'm gonna have that somewhere attached to this movie or in the description box somewhere so if uh, you're a reader, there's that too. Um, and I just want to say the whole deliverance thing, people get confused by it, but really it's when you believe you're justified, you know, um, but there sometimes is a gap between believing and actually being baptized by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is what um, breaks chains and allows you to actually be free from sin, really, and where you're no longer in bondage to it. But again, it's your faith that you have to have because it's in your faith that you even get salvation. And faith in the righteousness of Jesus, and you can literally put it on like, like a garment. And the thing is, it's by faith, and you're also making a covenant with God. You're coming back into covenant, so it's not like, I believe you, I do whatever you want, whatever I want. It's you're, you're coming back into covenant. And so you become like who you're with. So when you're really with Jesus, you're going to really become like him. But the thing is, it's by faith. So you don't say, I believe now I got to do, 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 to be good. No, it's not really like that. You have faith. Of course, there's, you have to have that fighter in you, but really what you're fighting for is faith. It's your, it's faith that gives you that line or but faith you are believing that Jesus Christ can actually change you that you're believing that Jesus Christ can actually make you righteous can actually break yokes off your life can, you can actually stop sitting like you actually start believing that the thing is a lie doesn't hold up so if you believe in a lie nothing's gonna change but if it is really the truth and once you start believing it, and it's the truth, like I believe that chair is safe to sit on, it's not broken, and I choose to sit on it, the truth's gonna be revealed. And then now I get to rest finally, hallelujah. So it's kind of like that. But if the chair is not really safe to sit on and it, it falls, the moment you sit on it, you're gonna realize, dang, I was wrong. Kind of like people who believe in other gods, you're gonna, you're gonna be hurting, and it's gonna be a lot more than a broken chair. But the thing is, that's true. Then that means when you are a believer, you are saved from sin. So it will no longer have um, a hold on you anymore. It will begin to break off of you. And like um, Jesus talks about fruit and faith being like a mustard seed, it grows. And so when you become a believer, it's going to take time for that faith to grow. But if you are truly a believer, sin will break off of you. You will be delivered. You will be healed. You will be restored. Like those things are, it's a domino effect. It's like a, it's like a plant that's been planted in the ground. It is going to grow. No matter what, it's going to grow. The thing is, you can change your mind whenever you want. Because again, salvation is based on your belief and your faith. So you can change your mind whenever you want. Whenever you change your mind though, or start to change your mind, you know, faith becomes weakened. Um, it's going to stop that growth and the plant just might die. So the once saved, always saved kind of thing can can get can people can get people complacent and then they and Paul says test to see if you're really of the faith so again it's all through Jesus Christ but are you really believing that he can stop your sin or are you wanting your sin because then that's a whole nother thing all together the thing is then that comes into double mindedness which God does give us time he gives us time to repent even this time right now is to repent so even if you become a believer you're still in a time period where God is giving grace to people to let them do whatever they want to do and he will keep chasing you. He will do whatever he can to get your attention. Um, I saw him like crazy 
and didn't realize how much sin I was in because I didn't realize that fear and doubt in of itself literally is the opposite of faith. And I didn't realize that in itself was an open door. And that's what allowed so much demonic onto me. Also, um, uh, when I was uh, 10 years old, an um, uh, old man came to my front door and was knocking. And I, you know, my parents were, were, you know, missionaries overseas. So I thought I need to do the right thing. And I was already so upset that I didn't know the language there very well. And um, so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to practice my bahasa and I'm going to open that door and I'm going to be nice to that man. And I felt so proud of myself when I opened that door. And my mom was taking a shower at the time. And I was like, my mom's going to be so happy about this. I just, I just, I let him in and I'm talking to my bahasa. And I think he understands what I'm saying. And next thing I know, he is grabbing me and touching me all over. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? And I get full of anger and I push him out that door. But I was also really freaking out. But I pushed him out that door and I slammed the door in his face. And I just looked at my body and I was just like shaking. And I didn't realize that moment, he was probably part of a coven, probably part of something. But I got a ton of demons from that dude. And that memory came back to my mind when I first manifested all alone in my room in Florida. After like feeling led to go into fast for the first time. And like being really in a place where God, I just want you. And I just... I, I had all this faith in some lies that were actually from the demons that I thought were coming from God. I thought I was going to marry this guy and wait for him for seven years and, you know, all this stuff. Like, it's so much spiritual weirdness. But, um, but God knew I had faith. Even though I was believing lies, he still knew I had faith. And I was seeking him. And it's all about seeking the Lord. If you really, truly want the Lord and seek him and you turn from your evil ways, man, he is going to come through. And so I sought him, then he exposed things in my life, and I turned away from things. And because um, at the end of the day, we all know that deep, deep down, we do have a root of rebellion. And um, even atheists, they don't want to admit it, but deep down they know there is a God, like there really is. And that's why we're held accountable. That's why we are actually worthy of going to hell that's why we're actually deserving of it it's because we actually are accountable because deep down part of us already already knows the thing is i know we're born into it we're kind of just like an extension of adam and eve really we're just part of their seed so it doesn't feel like it's fair but the truth is we're just an extension of them like we we would have done the same thing we would have done the same thing because we're literally coming from them so anyways it's redemption and Jesus is the true and better Adam, and there is a new life, and there's new hope, and it is real, and God wants us to be part of it, and the thing is, he's giving us a second chance. This is a second chance, so we all are held accountable, and we have had our chances, and we still have a choice right now to repent, when, repent. but our, our choices of sharing the word and obeying God and giving him our yes, wow, it's getting really dark, can change the course of history and can actually... Um, cause people to want to change and what's going to cause people to want to repent well one stop the distractions when they're no longer distracted um, the distraction is a big toy of the enemy because like I mean you just talk to one person and you know like anybody you just me at the grocery store and you like ask them like the most basic information like where do you think you're going to go when you die or do you believe in God and things like that and they have the hardest time answering it I'm like why would you have why have you not even like thought about this and then you just go through some simple questions and then all of a sudden they're like oh you're right you know it's it's the devil's trying to distract people because deep down they already know but if they're not thinking about it and they don't think about it and they don't consider the time of repentance right now they're going to miss it and that's not what we want like I, I, I should be in, I should be going to hell. I should be going to hell, but I'm not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my gosh, it's getting so dark. Um, and I feel like I was going to say something else. Oh yeah. When that man touched me, I got those disgusting sexual demons. And there's some other abuse that happened to me when I was young. But anyways, I, uh, was really, um, not aware that I had all those demons on me. And when I went to a church, uh, the first church I ever went to, this is when it first came to the States and I was church hopping all over the place. I did go to one church and they had people like share testimonies having a demons. And this one girl was talking about having spouse demons. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Like, oh my gosh, what is wrong? Like, oh, like, I'm so glad I don't have that. <laughs> <coughs> I didn't know I had it the whole time and I had a lot of it. 
because they can hide they really do they hide and this this whole time i thought i was gonna marry this guy and then you know the lord really put 2022 and 2023 really deep in my heart like i've been waiting for those two years for seven years like i was waiting for them thinking you know um thinking that well, I knew, I, I, I didn't exactly know what was going to happen, but I knew something was going to happen. And right was I about that. Yes, the devil was lying to me, but those two years were not a lie. They weren't what I thought they were, but God really did step in and start breaking things those two years. Hallelujah. And I learned what repentance really means. And that really without repentance, I can't really be whole. I can't be restored. And, um then I'm not really believing in who Jesus is without repentance. Because if I really believed in Jesus and who he really is, man, be on my knees every day as I should be. Wow, it's getting so dark. And Jesus was talking to his disciples and he was explaining how God um, was the one who brought those that he was calling to him. And those were the people that he was ministering to um, and teaching and, um, I see now that like the when someone is um beginning to open their heart and God will pursue someone like will try to make the circumstances to where they'd be able to hear his voice and when people are pouring prayers into someone he really does does try to make it obvious to the person that God's calling you you know and wake up um and the harvest are those kind of people the people where god sees that they would they would say yes that they would turn to him that they would repent um those are the people that are part of the harvest and there's many that seeds have been planted into them um and they they're they're just not right you know ready yet like they wouldn't receive but god knows that if this and this and this happened then yeah they would they would um, and so our job is to plant those seeds and is, is, is to give our yes to God and, 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 and see people um, change and, and, and want him. And like I was saying earlier, it's, I, I explained the first point and that's stop the distractions. But my other point that I didn't get to was love. Because that's not that's something that's not of this world that the devil can't offer. You can't really truly show love. Um, there's love, but the real love that's just something that only comes from God, and that's what people are really hungry for. Um, and so, as I said also before, deep down we're all in rebellion. Um, and so, what can change a rebel's heart? <laughs> the love. So, um, and also it's, it's God who makes the plant to grow. It's God who makes the seed to grow. He's the life giver. And so all we can do is plant the seeds. Um, and also know that it's those that God is calling that we are to minister to, that we are to, um, you know, on a broad scale, yes, we call everyone to repentance, but the ones that we need to focus on are the ones that God brings into our lives, into our paths and the ones that he highlights to us. Because it's God who calls the specific people. He sees, oh, that one, that one's calling to me. That that one, that one, I, I can see, I can see that they have a pure heart. Or that one, you know. There could be someone like completely in sin. Completely like oblivious to what sin even is. You know, they're just so far off. But God's like, wow, if I revealed myself to them, they would, they would, they, they wouldn't turn back. They would actually love me. Like, I want to call that one, and so it's 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 he's after those with contrary hearts, those with pure hearts, and he he's calling those people. So, yeah, be that person. <laughs> you know, I've there's a lot of things I haven't done, like um, never had marijuana, I've never smoked, I've never had sex, I've never. Um, only drinking like a glass of alcohol at a time. Nothing more than that. Never been drunk. Um, you know, never done drugs. Never done a lot of things. But I mean, 
the Bible says our righteousness is like filthy rags. It's not about that. Um, I will say those things have pr protected me um, because it it's when you're abiding by God's law, it, it protects you. And so, yeah, that's been good. It, it doesn't save me, but it, it's been good. Um, and so when we are saved though we we are in in christ's righteousness and we begin to live a really a supernatural life because in our own way in our own flesh we wouldn't be able to become the people that um we become when we're believers we're really we're really like strangers on the earth you really become so different from the world um because it's a supernatural thing that's happened in your in your soul and in your mind and your body it's you're literally infused with the the holy spirit um and there's no other spirit like him so that's pretty amazing it's also all about really all about what you love you know going through all of the attacks you know from the devil and when you're getting tested and tested and tested it really gives you strength um and it makes you not want to fall into temptations is really where your heart is because for example, you are, you fear the Lord and you're like, I don't want to go to hell and I want to go to heaven. And, um, you know, I know God's out there and so I believe in him, but I really love my sin. Then you're not going to turn away from it. Why would you? Because you love it. You love it more than you love God. So where your heart is, there will your treasure be also. And so I love in John how it talks about so much about love. Um, love was like I always do to love like that was ever since I was like when I was really really little. You know how every little kid has their thing. My thing was baby dolls when I was really little. It was baby dolls and love, <laughs> love, 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 love. And I would always do it all my head. I always said if I ever were to get a tattoo, I never have. But if I were, it would be love, and it would just be like in cursive on my thumb. Always, I would always doodle that on myself, but, um, love, it's all about love, you know, and I, and I, also John, um, he, he was the one who really knew his identity, and he always, uh, referred to himself as the one whom Jesus loved, the one whom Jesus loved, and, um, that affected everything in his life, um, even his health, he knew who he was, and he was, he knew that Jesus loved him. Um, so when you really know that you're loved, um, and then you really return that love back to the Lord, and that when you really have that union with God, like you're you're untouchable, you're unstoppable. So yeah, you can get all the deliverance in the world, you can have all the faith in the world, and even Paul says that, you can have all the faith in the world, but without love, it, is everything's vain. That's when everything becomes vain. And you take a look at Ecclesiastes, even Solomon knows this. You know, he had all the wisdom in the world. So all the wisdom too, faith, wisdom, all these things. But love is the most important thing. Um, love is what gives meaning to everything. Um, even the union of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit is love. Um, so know what you love and choose what you love and whatever you love is where you're gonna stay and what you're gonna stick with and if you want to be in the kingdom of heaven it's those who love the son jesus it's a kingdom of jesus lovers so when you really get to know him you will fall in love with him you really will you really will. When I first was um, going through um, deliverance, this one lady, she was awesome. And she hit it right on the spot. Like she knew exactly. She's like, this is going to all start coming off of you once you realize what your, your identity. Jesus is like the glue that holds us together because he made everything. Everything was made through him. And so he holds everything together. When we're in rebellion, we literally like we like take the glue out of us, and we literally just we fall apart so so easy. And then we we try to hold ourselves together with other things, and that's how you get addictions. It's like something's gotta hold me together. And you're right about that. Something does have to hold you together. You have to be 
you know, present in the way he made me to be. And in a broken world, we're no longer who we were meant to be. That goes back to identity. So really what helps you, like, like I said, it's all about faith and believing. If you really believe who Jesus is and you're believing in for repentance, you're also knowing who you are because first of all, Jesus died for you. That's a big deal. Second of all, you can be free from sin. And then you're like, then what does that make me now? Uh, that makes you whole. That makes you redeemed. That makes you important to God. You know, well, you're already important to God, but you're with God now and you're right with him. And uh, you see how valuable you really are. Like you're actually really valuable and you can actually start saying, I am not one to do this. I am not one to badmouth. I am not one to, will get born. I hope you're not doing that. I am not one to uh, hate. I am not one, except evil. I am not one to lie. You know, these things that you actually became part of your identity. It's another thing with demons is that uh, their identity becomes your identity. The longer they're with you, the longer they intermingle with who you are and the parts of you and your, you know, like when you, kind of like in marriage, when you become one flesh with your spouse, um, that's going to be awesome. Um, not there yet, but that's another thing is the devil tries to steal, steal your future relationships. Like, like even for like homosexual people, like they have like a God given relationship that God wants to bless them with. And the devil tries to hijack that through homosexuality, like stealing their God given destiny because marriage is a beautiful thing. And literally our bodies are made to have sex. So sorry. Uh, that's just how we're made. Gotta acknowledge that one. Um, but uh, now I'm sorry, I'm so distracted. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Should I start talking about sex? Uh, what was I talking about? We're literally like a like a machine is made for a purpose. The way we are made, the Bible talks about us being vessels all the time. The way we are made, literally, in our the blueprint of how we are made, is to be filled, to be in a relationship with something. Literally, we're literally made to be in a relationship. So we're gonna be in a relationship with something no matter what. So that's why you can't say you're a believer and then be in a relationship with something that's evil. Because then in a way you're in a relationship with Satan. And, and he talks about the sons of disobedience. You know, you, that's complete hypocrisy. So, um, it's, sanctification is a process. Um, but once you're in a relationship with Jesus, he can renew your mind, your heart, and that takes time. It takes time to repair things. Like when things leave, they did a lot of damage to you, to your own self, to the own room. So it's about what you are in common with. So with darkness and light, if you're, you get in common with the things of God, if there's anything in common that you have with the devil or with the darkness or with the kingdom of darkness, um, they see something that they have in you. And so that's why there's that attachment thing going on. All of those places have to be healed because you don't belong to that kingdom anymore. I define trauma as heartbreak. And like I was saying, how Jesus is the glue that holds us together. And we can have, you know, we become a believer and we have Jesus and, you know, there's still parts of us that need the blood applied, <laughs> parts of us that still need him to come into, like I said, that light needs to shine on all of us, um, all of the hurt places and the broken places and the sin, all of it. Um, and of course, demonic likes to attach to the broken places because the broken places is usually where we allow things to substitute as the glue. Um, but when Jesus comes, um, and then another analogy is doors and rooms, um, memories. Um, and wherever you don't see Jesus usually is where the most pain is. And because apart from him, he is righteousness, he's goodness, he's love. 
He's the way, the truth, and the life. So if you can imagine a moment in time where you didn't have any of that, that place needs Jesus. And so if you ever have, so I, honestly, I say with any trauma that you have, go back to that memory and see Jesus there. Because you lost something. Whenever there's, wherever there's heartbreak, that heartbreak is there because something was missing. Something, something broke you. And that pain is unbearable. Like you will, like it's pain. So how do you get rid of pain? You, you put back what needed to be there. And what needed to be there was love. What needed to be there was truth. You know, like when I got molested as a young kid, I didn't think that was anything at the time, but it was a lot of things. Spiritually, a lot of chaos was happening that I couldn't see. And as a little kid, well, not most kids are fully surrendered to the Lord, and you're very vulnerable. You're very vulnerable. And you tend to believe whatever you hear. So, you know, the demonic, they just see you and they just can grab any part of you. start whispering and then you just start believing in everything they tell you thinking it's you okay i'm done talking now i don't know what happened today i was supposed to be at work and then i got big to and so and i got the idea of making this movie yesterday and here i am at the very end of it I don't know how that just happened. It is weird. It's totally spontaneous, but I just feel like almost like a urgency. I don't know why, but like I think this came together for a reason. So peace to you and let the fire of your altar never burn out. Don't want that. I'm starting to like coffee again. Well, I've always liked coffee, but I just haven't really thought about actually drinking it. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> I love coffee. But I will say that right there is not good. Not good. Just Jesus. There, there shouldn't be, it should be like that. Not like that. That's bad. That's very bad. There's this one thing that I haven't actually shared a whole lot about but it came back to my mind. And um, before I moved to Florida, I remember um, one night I was in bed and like I could just, it was almost like I could feel it in my heart, but then also in my head. It's hard to explain, but like I kept hearing, come to me, come to me, come to me. And it was um, in the scriptures, like the scripture of that in Matthew of the verse of come to me all who are, um, Golly, I don't have it memorized. <laughs> I should have that one memorized. The verse right here. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So I was hearing all of that, and because I, during that time, I was really seeking the Lord, and he was really answering me, and I really felt that. And so then it was when I was like that, yeah, my mom's like, yeah, I'm coming. And then that's when, immediately after that, I felt called to go to Florida. And then I went to Florida, and I was able to come to a place of just me and God, really. And a lot of other things I didn't know were in between us. And then he revealed all of that. And um, I really do believe, uh, uh, I don't know, like an angel swooped in or something. Because, man, something was tormenting what was ever on my back. And so, it's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.